Friend Podcast. My name is Candice Marie, and this is my friendly little host here. The Peace Dina. Mr. Chocolate Daddy himself. Little host with the big dynamo ideas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Where's this going? <laughs> We're, we're on our second video of today that we're filming. Yeah, yeah. Because we're a little, we're, we've cut a little bit more loose, you know? we got to keep you guys entertained. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're back with another episode. I'm not going to tell you what number it is because I keep fucking it up. So um, we're just going to scratch that and production, like, is just ready to just Boom. beat me. Um, but I know we're in the double digits. Yes, Which we means are. we're committed, and it takes mm -hmm. 21 days to make or break a habit. And we've been at it for about 21 weeks, actually. Yeah, actually. So this is surprising. Doesn't feel like it. Wow. Because neither one of us usually finish anything. So that's... That's, that's awesome. It's kind of impressive. That's you know? what's up. I can admit that. I don't yeah. I don't finish things. I like to fall off the internet for years at a time. And yeah, me too. Resurface. I'm and not like the best a completely with consistency. Different person. That. No, no, it's a consistency thing. Like, right. we start things. We just don't right. finish it. We got Hashtag the Aries, cardinal energy. But, right, right, right. That's amazing because, uh, you know, this, this episode is all about the guidance towards your mission and actually accomplishing what you're here for the notes oh i'm so excited to talk about this so those of you guys who have been following um, our podcast thank you for continuing to watch and to sub support our channel mm -hmm. um, we're not just coming and talking about what's going on seasonally or with you know new moons full moons eclipses whatever um, and current events but we also want to take this as an opportunity to teach you guys more about astrology so you can understand and maybe keep up a little bit more with what we're doing and hopefully encourage you to want to learn more um, so we've built off of talking a little bit about the angular houses we've built off of talking about sun moon rising now we are here to discuss the nodes and we're gonna get right into it because it's full of lots of information so you want to talk to them about just what the nodes are in general oh my god I, uh, this is gonna be fun this gets super nerdy yeah especially because um there's important transits happening on i think both of our nodes i know uh, saturn went over through my node when saturn, saturn hasn't hit mine yet <sighs> when saturn year. went over through my north node i created a new business so like i didn't notice that until after the fact like i, I didn't look at my chart and it was like oh this the planet's gonna be on my north node let me start a business i started the business first and then i realized oh shit, this is what's happening to my nodes so like the north node has definitely been a very clear cut it's one of the most accurate points i've ever really experienced in astrology where it's not necessarily vague for me it's like very on point even down to the degree but oh my god yes right but personally yeah. you know it's just still very fascinating okay we're gonna analyze each other's nodes oh at the end snap of this, and i want right, to hear what right. you think about my notes and i'll tell you what i think about your notes oh shit because like no north node is the same it really well ours is the same that. sign same sign it's the same right, sign right. we both have north different node decades Aquarius, right. which means we're freaky as fuck we're into aliens and conspiracy theories and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. weird and shit. knowledge and that networking um but it's still it's still very very you know fascinating because the whole um the whole notion of the nodes they're not it's not like mercury that's a real you know point the nodes are really the shadow of the moon yeah so it's like calculated points based off of the moon and where the moon is at exactly. the time of birth and and Basically, we'll all backtrack a little bit. You've got the North Node and the sword, South Node. I almost said Sword Node. Sword like, what node. the fuck? Like Swordfish? What? <laughs> Hello, it's still Mercury Retrograde. You've got the North Node and the South Node. If you look at your needle um, chart, you'll see these. They almost look like little horseshoes. So the North Node is the one that is pointing down. The South Node is the one that is pointing up. And these are calculated points based off of the moon that are markers in the I sky. the North Node was pointing up. Right? Yeah, south node up. I'm saying like open. The south node is open. The north node is like a horseshoe. Oh, that I see points what you down. Mean. I yeah, guess yeah, I should yeah. have specified that. So. No, you do, you do. South That's node, so. north node. <laughs> Sign language. That makes sense. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna stop because I'm gonna I'm gonna go full full reread. Um Word. so yeah. the nodes deal with calculated points. Um, according to where your moon is and the nodes change roughly about every like what 18 months 
Um, and yeah, it talks a little bit about this calculated hidden place or hidden planet, even though in Western astrology, we see it as a point. Mm -hmm. Some Vedic astrologers would argue it's almost like a shadow planet. Like a um, dragon tailor. Yeah, it's known, known as, um, what is it, Rahu and Ketu. Mm -hmm. But these are not real planets. These are just calculated points, but they are very, very, very powerful. Which is fascinating. Um, both in transit and what they activate, and also when you've got, um, you know, you know, planets conjunct a north node or anything like that. And it's actually because of the nodes I take the midpoints seriously now, too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You have to. Don't be sleeping on midpoints. Like I once, slept on midpoints. Once yeah. you get in on midpoints, it's like pff, fucking mind blown, especially when you learn what the midpoints mean. Yeah. And that's where you become a really good astrologer because when there are transits happening and there's no aspects or conjunctions or anything and mm -hmm. people are like, what's mm -hmm. going on? Right. The midpoints will tell you a bigger story. Then you go deeper into the midpoints and what the midpoints mean. Ooh. And each midpoint means something. So that's it can be triggered by transit. Right, right, right. Yeah, very, very magical. But building off what you were saying when you were like, I started my business and then I checked my nodes and I was like, holy shit. First of all, how the fuck do you not check your chart on a regular right. basis? I mean, I, like, I had an idea, right? Okay. But, like, I didn't expect, like, I just didn't plan to do it exactly then. You I know feel like I, mean? I need to stop looking at my chart. I need to be I really honest you on with that. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I need to stop looking <laughs> at my chart. I need to stop. It's a problem. Oh like, I have God. to stop looking at it. Like, I feel like I... Maybe one of these birthdays, I'm gonna be like, I'm not gonna look at it for a year. But the mm. problem is, is that I know where we my, know too much. I know too much. I know yeah. where my planets are. I know my angles. So I'll be like, you know, talking to a client or doing a, a horoscope and just like sweating bullets, like fuck, like next November, like this is gonna happen. Like I know, <laughs> right? Like I know, and that's the problem. And I'll, I'll get into that when we talk about my North Node right, and like why right. I'm sweating bullets because Saturn hasn't hit it yet. Right. Basically, when I started my business, which was when Saturn was in Scorpio. Oh, nice. So how long ago was that now? That was... That was like 2016. No. 2015. Well, the no. very beginning. Was it... 2015 was Saturn Sag, actually. Yeah, it was like 2013. So 2013. 2013. So when Saturn went through Scorpio, that's really when I built my business. And I have planets from 4 degrees all the way to 19 degrees of Scorpio in my second house. Nice. So it was this, I mean, all of the cosmic things that happened in my life that year were fucking insane. Like, that was when I really realized, like, I needed to get my shit together. And I was kind of a mess. And I had a bit of, like, a spiritual crisis and was like, okay, what's going on? Like, I can't work my day job anymore. This doesn't make me happy. I, mm. I went back into learning, not learning, but getting into the regular practice of reading tarot for myself, mm. more as like a therapeutic thing. And then, you know, I would tell friends and then friends were like, can I get a reading? I'm like, sure. And then I was like giving readings to friends. And then after about like six months of like routine reading consistently for myself, other people who have asked never charge for readings that's when things turned and it was like I would come home from work and there would be like a line of people sitting outside of my house and I, I lived in I live I well I'm from Arizona but I lived in um, Burbank California for a very long time so I'd come home and there'd be all these ladies sitting outside like on the fence you know and at the time I was like living with my mom I had just like gotten out of a relationship I was engaged it fell apart like a total like quarter life crisis and came back home and was just like, this is what makes me happy. And everybody thought I was crazy. Mm. And I really love to do it. I love to read cards and I love to read astrology. And that's that year that was a pivotal year when Saturn um, was in Scorpio and also when the nodes were in Scorpio, that really made me realize like, no, I have to do this. This mm. is really important. And that built my business. I gave myself a year. And and squaring I, your nodes. Yeah, and it was yeah. squaring my nodes too. So like... You know, the nodes and, and them going in transit, you know, and, and, and conjunct a needle placement in your chart, a planet, or maybe moving with a planet. Oh my God, it just makes so much stuff happen. And so, okay, so we'll get into the difference of what the nodes are. For mm -hmm. those of you guys who aren't aware, do you want to talk about the south node? Yeah, the south node I've come to respect so much. I believe that the south node is the key to accomplishing your north node because the south node usually will denote talents is your ta talents is talents you're born with in this lifetime and like stuff you're really naturally good at or um really it's gonna denote the conditions which is still fascinating to me because this is an actual point it's like the shadow of a moon right calculated so to be that on point <clears throat> as far as like 
the notion and the, the details of your past life or if you don't believe in past lives, early childhood development, right? So it, 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 one thing that really I didn't believe at first, but then I really came to uh, believe is that the South Node can hold you back. Mm, fucking preach. And like I, I used to, <laughs> I used to not want to believe that because of the situations I was in. But, you know, whereas the south node does prepare you for your north node, it's all about balance, right? Because you can't lean too much on one side. But if you're too focused, if you let the south node, it will hold you back. And it's so sh it will hold you back from your north node, especially I know mine was in the fourth. But I think it's definitely a comfort thing because it's where we compromise easily. It's what we're used to. Yeah. Versus, you know, going out to accomplish the North Node. So recently I had an experience where, you know, with a spiritual brother of mine, he was very much so on my South Node. I had to literally let go of that influence because it was holding me back. And that's what really made me realize. And I don't want to be too fatalistic here because, like, there could be south node influences that help you towards your north node. You just have to see what aspects they have. But it really made me look seriously at like making sure you don't get too comfortable with the south node. Because it really can, it's not a bad thing, but it can. It's familiar. It's familiar. It's familiar. Yeah. You know, like I think about, I think about my south node, and we'll get into like the aspects to the nodes. That may even be a whole other video. But like when I think about my south node, my, my son, obviously is the ruler of my south node because my south node is in leo so my sun actually squares right. the nodes and my mercury squares the nodes oh, and we'll yeah. talk about what that means because you have that lightly you have mercury in a later degree but it still technically squares mm. by sign but yeah like a this venus square and pluto oh see there you go yeah yeah it's kind of yeah, it's, it's, kind a, of it's a grand, it's a grand fixed cross. <laughs> it's like uh, accomplishing my destiny will get me hated, but <laughs> <laughs> it also get me loved. It, it depends. Extreme hatred, extreme love. The South Node, though, it's like the Gemini. okay. So the South Node is like karmic, right? And when yeah. I say karmic, like people kind of cringe because I think mm. on like a just like a society level, we have this belief that like karma is bad. When in reality, karma is neutral. Karma is neutral. It's neither good nor bad. We've all it's had past lives that. Mm -hmm. We've been or saints or we've been serial killers and everything in between. Or evil witches and wizards, you know. Right. Know. I would like to think so. <laughs> but I would. I mean I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Who but, knows? But that south node, it's comfortable and it's karmic. So if you have really great aspects to your north to your south node, um, or like a really strong south node ruler, you may bring in all of these yummy goodies yeah. from a past life that you can really build on and realize that um it can actually help you like project you forward mm. because of what you've learned in the past because you can't accomplish your north node without the south right and you also want to look at aspects to the south node like you know just me personally this is total personal thing but because my south node is in leo and my south node's in the 11th house i'm a libra rising so everything's ass backwards but you know, South uh, Node in yeah. Leo automatically is like kind of like a very charming, creative, theatrical, kind of selfish, maybe royal, regal um, type of person in a past life because it's all that past node, That's a past mind life fuck. in Leo. But it's in my 11th house. In the house of Aquarius. In the house of Aquarius. Yeah. So it means that I've got a lot of friends from past lives that come into this lifetime that help me. I'm good at astrology, okay? It means mm -hmm. like I was probably some bougie ass fucking queen in a past life. Just saying. <laughs> See my Cleopatra episode. Actually, I want to really speak on that. The South Node Leo, or or any fixed it's royalty. Sign, it is royalty definitively. Like yeah. there's a strong chance you were a king or queen in a past life, especially with the Leo. Would you feel like maybe it's that energy where like Prince Hakeem, where like yeah. you couldn't really live a normal life, yeah. and now you don't want that. You want to actually connect with people or something like that. Yeah, I mean, and I've felt like this a lot. Like, I've had a lot of, like, weird karmic stuff with, with friendships. I've had a lot of people that come into my life. I have a lot of dramatic friendships. I love them, but there's definitely, like, a lot of drama with some of those people. And I find that being a part of a group, like, I'm super social. Like, I, I can go to a bar and make friends, and I'm fine. And I can go and interact with different groups. But for me, my north node in the fifth has been more challenging because it's an Aquarius, but also... It's backwards. So that North Node in the fifth is like, 
I've learned thus far, and granted Saturn hasn't hit my North Node yet, that it's about flying my freak flag and like being more independent and the fact that I can work on projects and I can work on projects with friends and other people, but it needs to be like-minded other individuals who I resonate with, who I will collaborate with, Aquarius. So it's like, like what we're doing here, mm. we both have our own thing, we do our own thing, but we can come together and we can work together on things creatively. And right. it's just been a lot of like um, really great, I think sharing a lot of like my own thoughts and my own creative stuff and coming back onto the internet. And it's been really cool because it's not just been doing this with you, but I have like my platform that I've been growing and like being more kind of consistent and yeah. I've had a lot of play time. Like Fifth House has been fun. So like now I live in Vegas and I go to casinos and I can do all of that stuff. And it's just been like really awesome, like for my personal life and yeah. So, you know, all in all, like the South node aspects that, that I look at, mm. I feel like if you've got good stuff, you can bring that into your life. You also may find that there are a lot of people around you who have planets or um, like if, if for example mine's you know Leo I've had a lot of really great friends that are Leos but I also have looked at some of those friendships and been like whoa like can't do too much of that like don't want too much of that in my life <laughs> and it's made me like realize like the south node can be great because I like the drama and the fun and the socializing but the south node Leo is good for drama I noticed like the when oh, drama so comes much to fucking us, drama and like we'll so be like we don't like drama. drama but we do like the tea so it's like you know it, it, and then I notice it naturally inclines us to be good actors too or like into theater arts yeah I know when I was a child that was when I was most active in theater arts when you'd go to grade school and there'd be plays and I didn't realize in grade school I, re I realized this after my Saturn return or a little bit before, but like I starred in my school play as Ebenezer Litterbug because it was like a world day version of Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, okay. Right. How appropriate with Capricorn Moon. Exactly. I was like, yeah. yo, so I've been Cat Moon even before I knew like I was the bah humbug and I was like, wow. And that really tripped me out because it's like, that's kind of like an archetypal casting that the teacher didn't see my chart, yeah. right? But like, it kind of let me know like, wow, like stuff like this is orchestrated. And that's where with the North Node and the South Node, which is like every 10 years it transits. Yeah. To me, that's kind of like a wormhole where you can time travel to. But it just really blew my mind as far as like noticing the themes of your South Node and how they prophetically like Oh, you're Tie talking to somebody who was like Rizzo from <laughs> Greece two years running. <laughs> ah, okay. there we I go. was that bitch. Rizzo? Fuck yeah. Okay, I thought you meant Lizzo. No, Rizzo. You've seen Greece, right? Oh, the movie. Yeah, Greece. the chick with the okay. short hair. And she's like a hickey from Kinnicky. That was me. Oh, yeah, I was like the one that got pregnant in high school. Oh, yeah, that was me. Okay, no, no, good enough. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, like, and, and that's just that's just that pipeline how like you use the south node to really embolden the north that's what i love about what we do that makes like, our suns really strong which is true when you think about mm. the placements but you know then i kind of like look at okay well you can take all that yumminess and that experience from the south node which in our case very really charismatic theatrical creative like very like out there you know like we're, we're on like even when you see us on here like we're on and we're kind That's of like true. childish, very, very Leo, right? Like really dramatic and bratty, but oh my God. you know, the North node is so different in a sense where the North node is like oftentimes what we're like, well, how am I going to achieve that? It's a challenge. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah. how do I do that? Like that, I, both in terms of the, the sign, but also the house placement mm -hmm. and yeah, it's like your soul signed a contract and you basically said, here's the deal. I'm, I want to do this in this lifetime. That's my to goal. To the exact degree of yeah. me, which is terrifying to me because it's like the exactness of how accurate it is. It's just like, wow. And I love, once again, it's a very, it's very much so a challenge. Like if we take our Aqua North Node, it's the challenge of networking. A lot of people see me on YouTube as a Gemini and they forget I'm a Taurus rising cat moon. So they meet me in real life and they're like, this isn't the dude that's yelling like a madman on camera. Like he's so subdued and he's chill. And, and you're like, cat moon. Right, like, <laughs> I'm just here to listen to you. 
so the challenge for me with the, the Aquarius is like going out and networking and being social and like connecting with people. And you would think it's easy for me, right? But I've really come to embrace it as a challenge and yeah. like to really, you know, it needs the, the North Node definitively develops your life it develops your strength and that what that's what makes me fascinated about sun south nodes and sun north nodes because if you're a sun north node like being yourself is a challenge yeah but you're also a captain of destiny so like you have destiny powers which is just like holy shit the north node is so fascinating to me because yeah. i feel like the north node is almost like life-wise like that's that finish line you want to cross mm -hmm. Right? It's like, I don't know if I can run that X amount of miles. Yeah. I'm going to try. And even if I get there right at the end, or even if I get close, yeah. right? It's that, okay, coming close. You, what, what I would recommend doing is if you're looking at your North Node, being more so like kind of like Dharmic, right? So Karmic is like where we've been, but the North Node being that Dharma of like what the soul hopes to achieve, to come into, to, to learn more about. And it's like new and unexplored and unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. Like, look to the ruler of your North Node. And the relationships are important, too, because the, the, the importance of the North Node made me accept and respect that we both have this, too. For example, my sun trines the North Node, but your rising trines the North Node. So my rising squares it, and your sun squares it. So, like, you you can have your... V, like, my Venus squares my North Node. So I like to have imaginary girlfriends <laughs> and cuddle with my pillow all day in the 12th house. Coming, But my North Node is like... Get up off your lazy ass and meet real people, you fucking idiot. Like, talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's the like, North Node in Aquarius is so hard. Right. It's hard. Um, it's it, really hard. T-square Pluto, so it's more yeah. extreme. You have to deal with extreme attention. So it's like, there's what I love to do, but my destiny clashes with what I love. And it's like... It's some real shit. It's like to get to where you, you need to go, you, you might have to sacrifice. You like, realize my Pluto Mercury sun squares my nodes, right? Right, your whole sun. So like, what's yeah. that like for you? Where it's like your it's whole my being. second house. Right. It's my second house, and it's it's materialized in me realizing that all roads to fulfillment lead to better self-esteem. It leads to better better self-esteem because the second house is like a lot of like this is what i have like i have this and i have this and i have this and i have this but you can have those things yeah. but does it really make you happy but square your son what's that like like no my son is the is the square to the nodes right yeah so it's like there's who you are as a person but it's, you have to it's like forcing square me to come into my north node yeah right. son being destiny but it's mm. it, it's what i have realized is that it's been forcing me to come to the realization that I can make money and have resources doing what I really love to do and being passionate. Like basically like my chart really talks a lot about with the Mars, Mercury, Sun, Pluto, my second about wealth Mars, and wealth Mercury, expansion. Sun, That's and a that, lot of squares. Yeah. yeah. So with the node square that it's me realizing there's what I have grown up valuing. There's what I valued up until a certain point, And now what I value is authenticity and having good self-esteem and investing in myself and, and being creative and realizing that the second house and the fifth house are very creative houses. So it's yeah. like, fuck. Any planet square the, square the nodes. I mean, that, that's probably something we should talk about too is when planets, um, first of all, square the nodes, at least from an evolutionary perspective, it's this view that that's a skip step that you incarnated into this life and when you have planets square those nodes, it means you must do these things because in a past life, south node, you didn't. Mm. And in a next life, north node, you need to learn these skills now because of where you're going. And sometimes I talk to clients and they're like, I don't give a fuck, this, I'm, I'm in this lifetime now. I'm like, okay, great. Well, you're here where you are now because you've had that attitude yeah. the last couple lifetimes. And it hasn't really gotten you anywhere <laughs> other than a few failed marriages and a really Shit. bad gambling or sex addiction problem. Shit. So planets square the nodes. And I'm super aware of that because like my sun Mercury square, I'm like, fuck, do I really value this? Like, is this really what I believe in? Like there's this constant thing that's going on for me and you know Saturn's now coming into those squares and it's about to hit my north node and I look at like 2022 that's gonna it, be good for you it definitely stabilizes mm, it actually no it squares it's your sun it I forgot my sun. I forgot it's in my fifth house yeah. 
them. And in fact, I look at them for synastry now too. Whenever I do relationship charts for people, like I learned that you can have the best compatibility with someone, but if your nodes don't connect, your destiny is gonna go this way, their destiny is gonna go that way. And I've seen that a lot with people who are- Heartbreaking. Who are couples who have um, like North Node conjunct South Node, South Node conjunct North Node. Mm, the ones that are about nine years apart. Yeah, my mom and I have opposite North and South Nodes. And like, she's Christian, I'm, I'm the astrologer. I remember I had a reading with Christopher Wateki and he was like, oh, in the past life, your mom was the spiritualist, you were the preacher. And so like, you're reversing roles. Yeah, but, you guys pass each other a lot. There's right. not a lot of togetherness because you guys actually affect each other's exactly. like destiny. It's directly opposite, like yeah. where she's going, I've gone. So, and, and it, it's a clash, but the, way, the reason why I respect that is one, it helped me be it, I needed that opposition to push me more. With the South Node and the Fourth, it's like I need to leave family using the resources, but come into my own success. But then I learned that the opposite nodes is like people you've been in each other's lifetime yeah. for ever. It's it's more challenging. I mean, it's interesting what you said about you know aspects with the nodes and and what that does because I think about like you know. I guess like armchair astrology will be like, well, you know, you're a Gemini and they're a Sag, so this will never work. When in reality, I, I've looked at thousands of charts at this point, and I've seen a lot of charts for people who have been married for a while and who have been in relationships. And sure, you can look at the sun, you can look at the Venus, you can look at the moon, you know, maybe you could even look at Saturn aspects. But one thing I really love is a good square because yeah. that square is going to push you to create change. It's going to push you the out of your comfort zone. The best relationships have squares too. Yeah, it's a lot of like friction Spicy. and- Spicy. I'm a big fan of uh, sun oppositions and relationships too. It's the best. I'm a big that fan That is the best. That. My my partner has- My Sagittarius uh, princess. Sun and- <laughs> He has sun, mercury, and Taurus. And I right. have sun, mercury, Mars, and Scorpio. Mm. But the right. nodes match, because he has a south node in Libra, and I'm a Libra rising, and he has a north node in Aries, and that's my seventh house. So oh, it's nice. a lot of like, oh, well, it's not what I thought, but it's like what and I need. And sex how too. Yeah. Sextiling North Nodes are a blessing. Yeah. Trining North Nodes yeah. are a blessing. Like, your destinies are compatible. And that's what I look at first. Because even if you have shitty compatibility, if your destinies connect, when you're learning your destiny lessons, it'll help you. And that's what I also learned. Like, I don't want to make this too compatibility, but like, the more fucked up compatibility aspects. The better the sex. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> true. <laughs> Especially it's the true. king countries. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. That's true. Oh, that's so true. That mm. is so true. Hold on. I'm thinking. thinking that's the thinking, only thing thinking. good about the relationship. That's the sex. so true. That's why I hate Gemini's and Virgos. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. fucking hate them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Men, not women. Mm -hmm. Just the men. Mm. Fuck! I never thought about that. No, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, the the sex is is a whole nother level. But that's about it. And if 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 it's not if, and that's why they don't always last because. Um, but but that's the thing. It's like through those challenges, it kind of like breaks. Through I would almost and see the 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 in conjunct more challenging the opposition because yeah, at oh, least the definitely. opposition you know from the beginning. It's like oh, this bitch is gonna be a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know the the, the, the in conjunct you, right? you don't know you don't know. The in conjunct is a love hate relationship. It's like I hate you, but fuck, like I'm, I just can't get my finger. That's off so you. true, and that yeah. Yeah, we should do like a whole thing on like on like synastry and compatibility and go deeper into it. We have done videos on that in the past, but do more series. You know, the yeah. the north node is so important. I guess that kind of expands into also how that works like when you find people who whose personal planets might be on your south node or your north node, so that south node being familiar, maybe they came right, in from the past, but right. what about north node contacts? North node contacts, um, definitively. So from experience, anyone who I know with Leo contacts is just like, that's my soul or spirit brother or sister. Like it's just so familiar. It's, it's a very comfortable feeling. Um, it's like it's a familiar vibe it's like okay i, I they help foster that right the north node context i've noticed is a different kind of kinship so like they constantly challenge me like venus on the north node sun on the north node mercury moon these people will constantly challenge me to be what i'm meant to be yeah they come into your life to basically help you grow into 
what your destiny was, but it's it's so challenging. Yeah. Like it's so, and it's it's oftentimes very different or unusual or uncomfortable territory. Like I think about, and I, I love this in like family charts. Like I've definitely, I've had lots of clients where I'll read for the mom and then I read for the husband and then I read for the kids and I read for the uncle and the parents. And then I see this reoccurring theme and I, I've seen that the more that I've studied my chart, you know, I've, I've got, my sister has her moon conjunct my North Node in Aquarius. My father's son is conjunct my North Node in Aquarius. My brother's Mercury is conjunct my North Node in Aquarius. My mother's Mars and Venus. And so even though, you know, my brother and my dad are Aquarians, my sister's a Scorpio, my mom's a Capricorn, um, I realized like, oh shit, like these people came into my life. Like I reincarnated, I have some kind of soul family contract with these people. So they can teach me more about Aquarius mm -hmm. stuff. And I realized for the last 30 years of my life, I've been like, you guys are all fucking nuts. And they, they all have energy towards Aquarius. They're all those exact same degrees my North Node. That's interesting because with my family, they're all on my South Node. Like my mom Which has Venus in Leo. Which is why you were Leo. like, peace. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't stay there. My sister has Venus in Leo. My, sister, my youngest sister who's here is the only one in our family that at least his Gemini Moon Libra rising, like she's, she, she has one foot in astrology, but then she has one foot being skeptical. Like at, at one hand, she'll teach me about masculine femininity when Jupiter's in her sign. The other point she'll be like, well, she's, Neil Tice Degrassi said it's a bias. And it's like, she's a, she's a boss. If she's a Libra rising cap, uh, a cancer 10th house son. cancer son. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's, she's boss. Little, she's, she's, the, she's mommy. And I mean, she's growing into it. Um, personally, it's, it's still very fascinating, like coming into the the North Node, depending on the house it's in and, and how it aspects. Like, um, I feel like our generation is going to really uncover so much more that hasn't been really spoken on. I'm so excited for the astrologers. I, and I, I saw I think I posted it or maybe I sent it to you that little picture that was like you know astrologers talking about this in the 90s like oh the astrologers that are going to come from the generation that was born in the 80s going into the 90s who had that you know saturn uranus or saturn uranus neptune conjunctions really that's it. That's i mean it right there. if you see what what astrologers our age are doing and we're 31 like where are we going to be when we're like 50. exactly right so it's kind of cool because we, and we come were told in with this we couldn't make a living off this too from people who tried to. That's the thing. Like I remember having one of my first tarot card readings and I what I let this person know this is an older dude and he was uh, I was like, "Yeah, I want to do this for a living." And he just straight out told me, "No, nah, dude, like <laughs> you can't make a living off of this." And he wasn't being rude at all. Like he was being totally kind, but he was just letting me know and you know, I've made more than a living off of this. And I really respect what he said, because it's not like he was hating. Like, if you look oh, at no. his generation, it wasn't really as older. Open. Older readers will tell you that. I, I, I've had an experience. I mean, I've had a mentor for the last, like, eight or nine years, which has been a lifesaver for me, because mm. she really helped me kind of get my shit together um, about eight years ago and really kind of come into where I'm at now and, and really work with me on a personal level, not just a spiritual level, but a personal level to, like, realize that... I was misplacing a lot of my energies. Um, but, you know, after working with her and like learning more about like, okay, like this is how I make things work and like this is how I do this and this is how I do that, I kind of like came into my own and I realized like, okay, I need that support from other people to be able to, I don't know, it's, it's kind of crazy. Everything's like super like cosmic. Right. Yeah, it's very cosmic. It's very North Node But she was the only reader that ever encouraged me. She was just like, yeah. She's like, I've worked, you know, I've had a private practice for 40 years. I've never worked with anybody else. I've been waiting for you to show up. Now I'm going to wow. work with you and train you. And she knew. She knew that somebody was going to show up. But I, I've had two other readers that have been really good friends in my life who have been like, do you really want to sit in a room and tell the future for people for a living? Because it's not going to be much of a living and you're not going to enjoy it and you're not going to make money doing it. And money has never really been the motivation for me right. like i i like having it i realize that it makes the world go round but i think i worked in an occupation for so long that i was doing it because i wanted to survive that i wasn't thriving mm -hmm. so i listened to a lot of alan watts about 10 years ago if, if you're stuck in your job and you want to follow your passion go and listen to alan watts talk Legit. about what if um money was not i think the object he, he does right. some like lecture where he basically says how He'd come in and he would talk to 
um, students who are getting ready to like you know segue from high school to college or college to their career and he would say well you know what do you want to be when you grow up and many of them are becoming doctors or lawyers or they're going into you know PR whatever they're doing and he would say okay great but like what do you want to be like and they would say, well, I want to be poets, or I want to be, you know, artists, or I want to be dancers, or I, I want to, you know, direct films. And he would be like, okay, go and do that and forget the money. Because if you're really good at what you do, and you're really passionate about what you do, it's just, it's going to happen. Like we're That's my sister's dilemma. I love that you said that, because yeah. she's in Stanford right now. And so her passion is singing. She is such a talented Saturn's singer. Saturn's in her fifth right now. And she's got a... She's so good. But she's she's in a PhD program, so she's there for eight years. She hates it. She doesn't want to be a doctor, but it's gonna pay really good money. And so most people are saying like, "Oh, why would you leave Stanford? Like this is it." But she wants to be a singer, but she doesn't want to take that. Lenore risk. knows in her nine. Sounds like she needs to like go she to, to believe leave, in get, herself. Get, a, get, a, get a vocal coach or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, 2020, she took a leave of absence so that she can like try and make it work. And then the the quarantines happened. So. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, there's, there's a, as a Libra rising, I feel like there's a huge push from the universe to focus more on our creativity right now. She's an artist. Libra is the artist. Yeah. Libra rising is artist. So yeah. she, she has to get that. You know what I mean? But I mean, well, it'll, it'll come there. But and then her north node is um, Scorpio. Oh, so it's her second. Mm -hmm. So she wants to be creative. So all yeah. she needs is a nice like Neptune, Jupiter trine. She'll probably have more time in her schedule next year to be singing more. She really just yeah. needs to make the decision, right? But I mean, I love that you said it, when it comes to what would you really want to do. A lot of her decision, like many people's decision, is based on money. It can't be. And I feel like that's Stability. like that. That's what I've learned through the square. So like when people start talking like that, I'm like, oh no, you're gonna be 40 and like buy a sports car and start banging hookers and oh realize that you hate your life. Like you yeah. can't. And this is what is the problem with not having some kind of basic understanding of astrology. Like I can't wait till there's a world somewhere, hopefully in the not so distant future, where we could know and actually like cater to what kids could be really good at doing. That's you, that's us. The reason why that's gonna happen is because what we're doing right now. I have so many young clients. Uh -huh. I had a client the other day that was, her, you know, a session that was set up by her mom and she was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was sitting there and I was like, what am I gonna tell this 14 year old? Because they're going through transits that they go through when they're getting a divorce. And I'm gonna, I, I had to like literally wrap my mind around the fact that I'm talking to somebody who's half my age and right. then bring myself back to what it was like when I was 14 and then speed up a little bit because 14 year olds now are more like 21. And the transits are most important there because that's the cognitive development. Saturn opposition. Right. So yeah. for me to sit down and like have to really think about how I'm going to approach talking to a 14 year old and like, you know, people would look at you being as like an early teenager, 14, 15, 16, having your first experiences dating and everything's dramatic then. But to, to be a Cancer rising at 14 and to have Saturn and Pluto in your seventh house, it's like that first like heartbreak that's like people are like, yeah, whatever, you're 14 years old, like you'll get over it. But I had to like level with this girl. Or on that the could phone. be her high school marriage. You never know. Right. Right. But it, it's I can't wait. I, I want to do nothing but like do readings for younger people yeah that's my passion like that's too. what i want to do i'm getting so many people who are coming in and having yeah. me analyze charts of babies too so like you know so many of my clients are like my baby was born like let's do the chart and i'll be like let's wait six months because All you're right. still in a hospital bed and if i tell you that their moon's in the 12th house like you're gonna lose your fucking mind so let's just like let it settle that's but good. still like parents should they should know they should look at their kids charts to Which nurture I what they could be. I mean, imagine really? knowing that you've got like the next fucking like Kobe. No, as a kid. seriously. But you and try you to put them that. through law that. school and like that talent goes to waste when in reality you could know from the beginning that they have wicked sports skills and you could groom that knowing that that's what they enjoy or also knowing that maybe they wouldn't come into those skills until they're 15. Yeah. So you can just let them do what the fuck they want, be a kid and not force them to do things. I feel like that's Uranus Saturn. Like we're gonna be able to integrate astrological knowledge into the school curriculum because people in grade school need to know this. 
um, counselors need seriously. to know this. Counselors Therapists need, need to, to know this. Doctors need to know this. Children. So exactly. There right. are things that we can tell about charts in terms of demeanor, health issues, personality issues, learning disabilities, challenges in terms of employers will hire staff. astrologers so oh, that yeah. they could read their charts when they're hiring people. I already do that. I have right. two separate companies that have me there monthly when they hire people. That's North Node Aquarius. Yeah. That's futuristic. That. Like that's that no one that's wild. I have clients that's that come amazing. to me that won't hire contractors, architects, they mm. won't they won't get surgeries, they won't choose doctors. Like you come to me with that stuff, I can tell you straight up like who's gonna give you the best care. And, and they're coming back because she's on point. So yeah. that's wild. Some crazy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, that's North Node and Aquarius. Don't don't slip on that. But right. planets okay, so planets conjunct the North Node. I do right. want to say this because in, in rare occurrences I've seen people who have planets on the north node and the south node so both of oh, these will apply to right. those out there who are like insanely fucking lucky because you've got the best of both worlds but what is your take on planets on the south node planets on the south node fascinate me like i, I have a, a soulmate friend who had, we have the same degree moon so we were born the same year but she has her son on the south node so she's someone who i realized coming up into the first 30 years she's very passionate in acting as well yeah so she has clips of herself acting um but i know she has chiron on her rising and she's very she's very she's not insecure but she has she suffers with self-esteem and she will doesn't suffer but she has self-esteem issues where she doesn't necessarily feel like she's always ready to express the north node right in Aquarius where she's done acting but the spiritual she's super psychic and she doesn't feel com as as confident on camera meanwhile she's gorgeous like she could easily just go camera ready so that let me realize the south node energy it's like she has all those gifts and talents that's the one positive side I have yeah. seen especially when it is like Leo right like you'll have exactly. that but my experience seeing like a lot of people sun conjunct the south node can be more of like a frustrating life where they're frustrated because they're so heavily their their ego is tied to who they used to be and yeah, what they used to have true true i've seen many clients who have sun conjunct right. the south node that have a loss or like a detachment with their father like where their mm. father died at a young age or their father you know left the mother and wasn't involved in their life or maybe the father went to prison or maybe the, the dad disappeared or the dad died there i have seen that or in some cases where the, the father segue even at a later point in their life really shook them and right. created a sense of like loss of their own identity with the son right yeah, yeah. i just i just see it as like which is a great point. I just see it like um, you're more aware of what resources you have to succeed. Right. But those same resources could hold you back because it's like you can get so comfortable there. You don't really develop what you need. And it depends on the sign in the house. I feel yeah. like South Node Leo Sun conjunct is probably going to do better. Yeah. Because it's ruled by the it's sun, ruled by the sun, right? Yeah. Versus if you're a South Node Sun Pisces, you're having meltdowns a lot, True. or you know, mental health issues, or Not you're true. there's a lot of isolation themes. Um, That's the co-captain to me. If the North Node Sun is the captain, the South Node is a co-captain. So you want to look at, you know, if there are planets conjunct your South Node. Um, it'll be this representation of that being a reoccurring theme. Like I've seen South Node Neptune people as people who have had a lot of health issues and they've had a lot of mental health issues or a lot of addiction issues or maybe they have um, a lot of dreams about past lives and drowning or, you know, being isolated or being, you know, persecuted for their, their belief system. Um, so you want to take into consideration the planet, the sign, and also what it rules in the chart. Um, for the North Node, for example, the weekend is a example of a, a captain of our group so he has son in aquarius where we were born too so uh the way i noticed that is as a captain of our destiny group i can aquarius is my 10th house the 10th house is what you look up to right so i can look up to the weekend and his successes because i know what he has accomplished is something is in the direction where i'm going so it's definitely i can imagine for him his moon squares it, it's like it could be really challenging to be himself because right. he has to actually champion and, and pioneer stuff that hasn't happened before. Like right. a, a recording artist with a Marvel imprint, shout out to Starboy, which, you know, 
very inspirational. I wonder if it was in my fourth house would I feel different about it as a Scorpio rising, but you know, the, the north note the conjunctions to the north note I feel are very empowering. But especially depending on what it is. Like if you've yeah. got a if you've got a really prominent, you know, luminary like the sun, you know, or even the moon, or if you've got Venus, um, or people who've got like Venus Jupiter, I mean it's like this destiny of that that archetype of the sign but also the planet and you're in tune with this yeah too it's leading for when i when i became the peace dealer this was after i was transitioning from christianity and i met a a, a santero who was into paulo mayombe and ifa and he's the one who taught me how to read tarot cards and transition he was an aquarius yeah, I've had right. some very prominent Aquarians that have been in my life and come more so recently since, you know, Saturn and Jupiter have been in Aquarius this last year. I've had probably two or three pretty prominent Aquarius friends that there's just a lot of me learning from them, even though they've been around for a while. It's yeah. me admiring them and being like, wow, I want to be more like that. And right. I also, due to the square, you know, in the oppositions to Leo, I've seen that I've had distance from some friends that have been Leo friends, not by choice, it's just life or what I've been working on or whatever. I've had less of those Leos in my life. And then I've also had a couple Tauruses kind of materialize in my life. So I've got somebody representing Saturn. I've got my Aquarians. I've got um, two or three Tauruses that have come into my life the last two years that are I think like really have really kind of changed the game and they are being like that Uranian energy and I've seen both of those making me move away from Leo. So it's it's manifested literally the square. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. And it's kind of like a tug of war in a sense, but you know, in future episodes we're going to go into where the north node happens in the sign and house. Yeah. This is just a good introduction just to get your feet wet into the destiny. Okay, so before we finish, because I know we're coming up on time, I want to analyze each other's nodes. Because right. I know if I don't do that, people are going to be like, wait, she didn't do that. So your south node's in the fourth in Leo, your north node's in Aquarius. My south node's eight and my IC is nine. Leo. So my north node so is... So it's on the cusp of the eight, icing. Nine. Right, yeah. So your north node on the midheaven in Aquarius is about being seen, being... Famous! Being famous, <laughs> right? Ruled by Uranus. I have and a then, rap song called I'll Never Be Famous. Well, it's very... It's a banger. North node in Aquarius mm -hmm. in the midheaven. Mm -hmm. It's like this, like, sense of, like, what is being famous is, like, moving away from fame and right. rejecting fame or doing it very different or right. having famous friends or working with famous groups. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on the degree. It's eight? It's eight degrees in a ninth house, and then my MC is nine aqua. Yeah, so it's... Um, Finding fame through teaching and preaching and teaching about the occult, sharing it with people, mm -hmm. you know, getting a lot of international recognition, people all over the world, and eights always deal with, you know, eighth house like Scorpio energy and how you're transforming how people view fame, which I think is so important, being that we have Pluto going into Aquarius soon, so there's going to be like, that's like fame killing in a way, yeah. when you think about it, and yeah. we're going to move away from this lifestyle of like, look at who I am and what I have and my boat and my watch and like all of my shit. Like the people who are going to get recognition are the ones who aren't fame seeking. Mm -hmm. So that can be really prominent for you because you're gonna inspire other people to like, you know, not look at fame the way that we have been. Right. Um, and then that south node being on your IC, that tells me that, especially in Leo, having to move away from home, having to be detached from the father, needing to learn independence like the father, um, and who's an Aries who taught me independence indirectly by yeah. just letting me figure it out through detachment own. yeah south node yeah yeah which is wild and then and then my mom and dad's north node is in Leo so it's like completely opposite do you also feel like the black sheep of the family I am the black sheep of the it's family south node ruled by the right. sun so you should feel I'm the black sheep of the family and we already have a Scorpio black sheep and even with her <laughs> I'm still the black sheep it's crazy yeah I okay. love it though. Do you want to tell me what you think about mine? Yes, so yours is Okay, like mine is North Node and Aquarius. Third at, decan, right? At, yeah, 21 degrees Jeez. in the fifth. Right. And I have Ooh, right, South right. Node and Leo, 21 degrees in the 11th. So to me, that's like using an entourage to come into your own independent success. That's kind of what's happening. And not using yeah. it, right? But like you already have it. So <laughs> it's like they're all, they're all like established royalty that's going to use their resources to help you build up, which is dope that it's happening. I feel like... Saturn hasn't hit it yet. I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen next <laughs> right, year? Saturn right. is because it's going to square my Pluto my and my sun. Oh, right, right, And right, transit yeah. Uranus. I already, I already... 
already know what's going to happen. It's still stable. Yeah, she knows. She knows. And that's the know. thing. Like, Aquarius, as I know. But outside of that, my opinion, please let me know if this is accurate. I feel like the difference between 8 degrees and 21 degrees is where with 8 degrees, I'm just supposed to really set up the network initially. Like, the groundwork. But I gotta go out. Right. 21 degrees is like stadium, stages, like the whole world. So yeah i was just, i don't i don't know if it's like really that different or i i feel like there's a difference with the decades so. i see it as also like kind of like saggy in a way like that for yeah. me I, I know you might have like a different the like degree theory right degree theory yeah. yeah but for me it's like you know it's it's big to grow like international teaching education and yeah. and and also fifth house working with younger people so i'm kind of like yeah something you about the, children the leo and oh the man. Awful. yeah oh man dad's <laughs> well, gonna be there in the next two years fifth house is undergraduate education too oh, so okay well well that makes sense you're gonna be uh destined to change that with uh my with my nodal transits in the ninth all right well please touch wood no none of us thank you all, all for stuff. tuning in as always <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Comment and down below to us. what your north node and south node is and what you feel it means. Yeah, the house and the sign. That would be interesting to yeah, see, right? The aspects it makes too. Very important. Yeah. And uh, keep listening, keep liking, sharing, subscribing. We appreciate your guys' support. And we also really appreciate those of you guys who um, are donating to the channel and you're a part of the monthly subscriptions where you can get all of the extras. Check out the links below. You can also find our website and also our merch shop. <laughs> We will be back very soon to give you guys fresh new episodes. So keep giving us ideas. We cannot wait to come back with something new. We'll see all of you guys very soon. Take care. Peace.